bassoonist for Leamington Symphonia, um, but I'm also a doctor of astrophysics um, at the University of Warwick, and this is the campus observatory. Um, this is our telescope that we use for teaching undergraduates, um, doing lab experiments, and observing things like star clusters, and occasionally even some of the planets. What's up with Pluto? So when I was at school, uh, Pluto was a planet. Pluto is not the only thing that was once called a planet that is now not called a planet. Um, it's not even the biggest of those things. Um, there is a very large asteroid in the asteroid belt called Ceres that was discovered long before Pluto that is bigger than it um, and was also called a planet for a while. That went through a change in classification um, or grouping when astronomers started to learn a little bit more about what it was like and what it was made of and, and the fact that it wasn't the only asteroid, if you like. It took a while for the term asteroid to come into use, really. Pluto is no longer classified as a planet, it is now classified as a dwarf planet. Um, and part of the reason for that is the Kuiper Belt, the large clouds of comets, um, rocks, asteroids and things like Pluto that sits um, mostly beyond the orbit of Neptune but sometimes crosses it as well. So they're, they're, some of them are called trans-Neptunian objects. It was becoming obvious that we either needed to update our classification of what a planet was or we start increasing the number of planets quite quickly. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union, which is the professional organisation for astronomers worldwide, um, they have a, a general meeting every year and they got together um, to try and define what a planet is. Um, and they've come up with three rules that are highly controversial, um, even amongst professional astronomers. And there are a lot of people that I know who work in astronomy that disagree with these. But there are three rules for being a planet. The first is that you have to orbit the sun. And right away, I have a problem with this rule because I research planets around other stars. And according to the IAU, none of those are actually planets because they don't orbit the sun. The second rule for being a planet is that you have to, you have to be massive enough that your own gravity keeps you in a roughly spherical shape. So your self-gravity has to be enough to support the object against um, outward pressure and to keep it in a spherical shape. The third rule is where Pluto really falls down. And the third rule is that you have to dominate your orbit gravitationally. So the orbit that a planet takes around the sun has to be effectively controlled by the planet. The space around the orbit has to be controlled by the planet. And that's where Pluto comes unstuck because of the other Kuiper Belt objects. Pluto has a lot of other objects that cross its orbit that are orbiting the sun independently of Pluto. They're not shepherded around by it. Except that was controversial because I said that many of the Kuiper Belt objects are trans-Neptunian because they cross the orbit of Neptune. So does that make Neptune not a planet? Apparently not. I do think that Pluto is a slightly separate class of object. I'm just not sure that the rules we have currently to define that distinction are the best rules to do it. There's also the fact that we know of four other things similar-ish to Pluto. So Ceres is one, the biggest asteroid. You've also got um, Haumea, um, Eris, and Maki Maki, which are other objects in the Kuiper Belt, like, like Pluto, that are similar in, in terms of size um, and orbit. Um, and there's even a few other, few other ones that have been proposed. There's um, Kwawa 
and there's Gong Gong, um, and there's a couple of others that I'm forgetting. So we're up to about nine um, potential dwarf planets or potential dwarf planets at this point. So if you counted all of them, we'd be up to 17 planets. Um, and this is what I mean, the number would just keep growing and growing. Although it hurts me, um, I, I think Pluto is not a planet, I just don't agree with the reasons of why at the moment. So Holst, uh, in composing seven movements, ignoring Earth, um, inadvertently got the number of planets right. And when Holst wrote the planets, Pluto hadn't actually been discovered yet. So you might think we've known about Pluto for a long time, but it was only actually discovered in 1930. And Holst wrote the planets in 1914 to 1916, so overlapping with the, the first half of World War I. And so he didn't actually know Pluto existed, hence he didn't write a movement for it. And although he died four years after Pluto's discovery, he actually refused to write a movement for it. By that point, he'd become a little bit disillusioned with the planets. He felt that its popularity was taking attention away from his other works that were equally worthy of attention, or in fact, in some cases, he thought were better. Other people have. Um, the most famous was commissioned by the Halle Orchestra in 2000. Bernstein at one point added a somewhat improvisational movement for Pluto. Um, so there have been attempts, but none of them have ever really stuck. Um, and the planet stays as its current form usually. Hopefully that's whetted your appetite for um, the planet's music. Um, if you want to hear the music I've been talking about, and make your own connections to the planets, then come along to our concert on Saturday, March the 25th at 7.30. Um, it's been held at All Saints Church in Leamington Spa. Um, so if you want an evening of fantastic music, please come along.